Hello my dear students, once again welcome to the physics class. In the last class, we had learned the functions and terms related to machines. Today we are going to learn about the principle of a machine. A machine works on the principle of law of conservation of energy. According to law of conservation of energy, energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. It can change from one form to another. All machines are associated with two types of energy. The first one is input energy or the energy that we have given to the machine. And input energy is the energy given by the effort into the machine or into the effort point. And the second is the output energy that is the energy given by the machine on the load or energy given by the machine on the load point. So these are the two types of energies associated with a machine. So according to law of conservation of energy, energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. It can change from one form to another. When we connect it to the machines, the input energy of a machine will be equal to output energy of the machine if there is no loss of energy in any other means. So a machine works on the principle of law of conservation of energy according to which input energy is equal to output energy if there is no loss of energy in any other means. Let me explain it with one activity. Here I have a glass full of water. Now I am transferring this water from glass to this tumbler. See the whole water is transferred to the tumbler and no water is spilled out. Hence we can say that the tumbler contains one glass of water. But if some water is spilled out by mistake, then the tumbler will have water less than that of one glass. We can compare this activity with the case of a machine. A machine is given by an energy at the effort point which is called input energy. Machine uses this input energy to overcome the resistive force offered by the load. If the whole energy is utilized and if there is no loss of energy in any other means, then input energy given to the machine will be equal to the output energy given by the machine. That is input energy is equal to output energy. Such a machine is called ideal machine. So in an ideal machine, output energy is equal to input energy. Since there is no loss of energy in any other means. Output energy is equal to input energy. Hence, work output will be equal to work input. So, in an ideal machine, work output is equal to work input. Then, what about the case of efficiency? Efficiency is work output by Work input, isn't it? Since work output is equal to work input, the efficiency of this machine will be equal to 1 or in percentage it is 100 percentage. So we can conclude an ideal machine is a machine in which there is no loss of energy and hence work output is equal to work input. And energy output is equal to energy input. Also, efficiency is 100 percentage. 
Now, what about the real case? We can go back to the activity once again. If you observe this glass closely, you can see some water sticks on the walls. That means water in the tumbler is little less than that of the glass. The same thing happens in the case of machine also. In all machines, a small amount of energy is utilized to overcome friction or weight of the moving parts. That energy is a loss since it will not come as output energy. Hence, in actual machine, output energy will be always less than that of input energy since some energy is utilized to overcome the force of friction or weight of the moving parts of a machine. Hence, efficiency of an actual machine will be less than 1 or 100%. The efficiency of a machine can never be greater than 1 or 100% since the output energy can never be greater than input energy. If output energy is greater than input energy means it is against the law of conservation of energy. It means that more energy is coming as output than input energy. That is not possible and it is against the law. So, efficiency of a machine never be greater than 100%. So, in actual practice, we need to apply more effort since there is loss of energy. Hence, the mechanical advantage, it is the ratio of load by effort. When the effort increases, the mechanical advantage decreases. So, the mechanical advantage decreases in actual machine. But velocity ratio is the ratio of displacement of effort by the displacement of load. And the velocity ratio is related to the movement of load and effort. That will not change. Hence, the velocity ratio remains same. So, in actual machine, mechanical advantage decreases and velocity ratio remains same. So, for a machine of a particular design, the mechanical advantage decreases due to friction and weight of the moving parts, but the velocity ratio remains same. Now, we can move to the relation between mechanical advantage, velocity ratio and efficiency. Suppose, a machine is used to overcome a load L by applying an effort E in time T. Let DL be the displacement of the load and DE be the displacement of effort. Then work input. Work input is equal to work input is the work done on the machine by the effort which is equal to effort into displacement of effort. Or it is effort E into displacement of effort DE. Now work output. Work output is the work done by the machine on the load. So, it is load. Here, load is L into displacement of the load. Since work is force into displacement. So, here the force is load and load into displacement of the load. So, here it is work input and work output. Let's look what is efficiency. Efficiency is work output by work input. Here work output is load into displacement of the load and work input is effort into Displacement of effort. We can combine 
the force factors together and displacement factors together. What are the forces? Load and effort. So here it is load by effort into displacement of load by displacement of effort. We all know load by effort is mechanical advantage. And displacement of load by displacement of effort is 1 by velocity ratio. Because velocity ratio is displacement of effort by displacement of load. So displacement of load by effort is 1 by velocity ratio. Hence efficiency is equal to mechanical advantage into 1 by velocity ratio or it is mechanical advantage by velocity ratio. So the relation between efficiency, mechanical advantage and velocity ratio is efficiency is equal to MA by VR or efficiency is equal to mechanical advantage by velocity ratio. So efficiency is mechanical advantage by velocity ratio. In the case of ideal machine, Efficiency is equal to 1 or 100 percentage. That means mechanical advantage by velocity ratio is equal to 1 or mechanical advantage is equal to velocity ratio. But in the case of practical machine, efficiency is less than 1 or 100 percentage since there is loss of energy. So in such cases efficiency that is mechanical advantage by velocity ratio is less than 1 or mechanical advantage will be less than velocity ratio. So due to energy loss the mechanical advantage reduces and the velocity ratio remains same. Let's move to the examples of simple machines. The first one is lever. A lever is a rigid bar free to turn about a fixed point that is called fulcrum. The axis about which the lever turns passes through a point of the lever is called fulcrum. This point does not move but it remains fixed when the lever is in use. Effort is applied at a point away from the fulcrum which is called effort point and the distance from effort point to the fulcrum is called effort arm. Load is also placed at a point away from the fulcrum. And the distance from fulcrum to the load is called load arm. This is the diagrammatic representation of a lever. If you closely look on it, you can see it is the figure we use to verify the principle of moments. So we can say a lever works on the principle of moments. According to principle of moments, in equilibrium, sum of the clockwise moment is equal to sum of the anti-clockwise moment. So here according to the picture, load offers a clockwise moment and effort offers an anti-clockwise moment. So in equilibrium, the clockwise moment offered by the load is equal to Anti-clockwise moment offered by the effort. So clockwise moment offered by the load. Moment of force is force into distance of force from the pivoted point. Here the pivoted point is called fulcrum. And distance of force that is load from the pivoted point that is fulcrum is called load arm. Hence, we can write the clockwise moment as load into load arm. Uh. 
is equal to anti-clockwise moment. Here effort is the force that produces anti-clockwise moment and hence the moment of force is equal to force into distance of force from the pivoted point. Here also the pivoted point is fulcrum. Hence distance from force to the pivoted point that is effort to the fulcrum is called effort arm. Hence anti-clockwise moment is effort into effort arm. Now on rearranging we will get load by effort is equal to effort arm by load arm. Here load by effort. Load by effort. Ratio of load by effort is called mechanical advantage. Hence mechanical advantage is equal to effort arm by load arm. In ideal case, mechanical advantage is equal to velocity ratio. Hence, we can write velocity ratio also equal to effort arm by load arm. Now, on the basis of the position of load, effort and fulcrum, we have three types of levers. The lever of class 1, lever of class 2 and lever of class 3. In class 1 lever, fulcrum is in between effort and the load. But fulcrum need not be at the midpoint between load and effort, but it should be somewhere in between load and effort and the load and effort are on either side of the fulcrum. See so, a pair of scissors, crowbar, handle of a water pump, claw hammer, pair of pliers, etc. are examples of class 1 lever. Let's look this examples in detail. In the case of a seesaw, fulcrum is almost in the middle. Hence, effort arm, that is, the distance from fulcrum to the effort is equal to load arm, that is, distance from load to fulcrum. Hence, mechanical advantage, that is, effort arm by load arm is equal to 1. In this case, this lever is used to change the direction of effort. But in the case of metal cutters, players, spade to turn the soil, etc., the handle, that is, the effort arm is longer than the load arm, that is, the blade. In all such cases, effort arm is greater than load arm. Hence, Mechanical advantage is greater than 1. So all these machines are used as force multiplier. Crowbar and claw hammer are also class 1 levers and force multipliers. But in the case of scissors, the blade will be much longer than the handle. That means handle is shorter or the effort arm is shorter and the load arm is longer. In such cases, mechanical advantage that is effort arm by load arm is less than 1 and such machines are used to gain the speed. A handle of a water pump is also an example of gain in speed since the water is the load there and which is at a longer depth than the handle of the water pump. So class 1 levers functioned as force multipliers, speed gainers and also to change the direction. Now let's move on to the next class of lever, the lever of class 2. In this type of levers, the fulcrum and effort are at two ends of the lever and load is somewhere in between effort and the fulcrum. Since load is in between effort and the fulcrum, load arm is always shorter than effort arm. Or the effort arm is always longer than load arm. Hence, the mechanical advantage that is 
Effort amp by load amp is always greater than 1. So in all class 2 levers, mechanical advantage and velocity ratio are more than 1. And they act as force multipliers. So class 2 levers only act as force multipliers. Bottle opener, nut cracker, bar to lift the load, wheelbarrow etc. are examples of class 2 lever and they all act as force multipliers. Now in class 3 levers, effort is in between load and the fulcrum. Hence, effort time is always shorter than load arm. Mechanical advantage and hence velocity ratio is less than 1 in all these class 3 levers since effort time is shorter than load arm. Sugar tongue, food treadle, etc. are examples of class 3 levers since they have mechanical advantage less than 1, they all act as speed gainers. You can find more examples from your daily life. To get you more clarity about the concept, I will explain some numericals. Calculate the mechanical advantage of a lever in which effort m is 100 cm and load m is 2.5 cm. Here, the effort arm is equal to 100 cm and load arm is equal to 2.5 cm. And we all know mechanical advantage is equal to effort arm by load arm which is equal to 100 by 2.5. 100 by 2.5 means 1000 divided by 25 which is equal to 40. So here the mechanical advantage is 40. A load of 400 Newton is to be lifted by a machine whose efficiency is 40 percentage. Calculate the magnitude of effort if velocity ratio is 5. Here a load of 400 Newton is lifted by a machine of efficiency 40 percentage. And the velocity ratio is given as 5. As we all know, efficiency is mechanical advantage by velocity ratio. Here, efficiency is given as 40 percentage. 40 percentage means it is 40 by 100. So, 40 by 100 is equal to mechanical advantage divided by Velocity ratio that is 5. So mechanical advantage is equal to 5 into 40 by 100. 5 fours are 20. So 20 by 10 is 2. Here the mechanical advantage is 2. And we all know that mechanical advantage is equal to load by Effort. Hence, effort is equal to load by mechanical advantage. Here the load is 400 and mechanical advantage is 2. Hence, effort is 200 Newton. Hope you all understood what I told you today. Thank you and have a nice day.